Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Arena Open Day 1 Sealed Run. In this video, I'm going to be doing another Arena Open Sealed build, and then playing through all of the matches. And if I make it to 7 wins before 3 losses, I even qualify for Day 2, so it's a lot of fun playing in these higher level events. But before I dive in, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out, and it's free to do. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I post future videos, and leave a comment with your questions, feedback, thoughts, in the comments section down below. I do take the time to read all those comments and I respond to pretty much all of them. So uh, I do appreciate everyone who takes the extra time to leave a comment. Uh, if you would like to support my content, you can do so via the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. It's a great way to give back to the, my content, help me continue producing uh, videos and uh, upgrading my videos with things like a new webcam or microphone or um, making a Nikolai Bolas website and things like that. But we're going to be diving in. Let's see what we open here. Hoping for a coma. I think that's probably the most broken car that you can open. But we didn't do too badly for ourselves. We have th four cards in black-green. Black-green tends to be a good base color at the very least. Uh, this card usually cast for the Throne of Death part. as a little bit of a card advantage engine. And then Sir Rolf, Draugr, and Realmark are great. Reckless Cruise a blank. And Faceless Haven is sometimes good, but not really a great rare. So we're going to hopefully play black-green. But we'll have to see what we're working with in our rares. And things like in our commons and uncommons. First things first, I like to do is check out the land slot. So it looks like we got a couple of snow-covered islands, one of the better snow lands. Uh, we got a snow-covered swamp, which could be nice for this Draugr Necromancer. Necromancer. Snow-covered mountain, and then no snow-covered forest, which means we have a snow-colored dual. Highland forest is nice. And we got a Shimmer Drift Fail. So always check those lands first. Uh, we really do want to play black-green because we have a Sir Rolf and stuff. So let's start with... Uh, looking through our white cards. White is generally just going to be an aggressive deck, so if you don't have two drops, you can generally skip past white except for splash cards, and the cards that you're most often going to splash are Master Scald, Shepherd of the Cosmos, because the foretell card cost only costs one white, and that's pretty much it. Like a white gold card you'll sometimes splash, maybe you'll splash Rune or something, but this is the only white card that I would really consider. Let's look at our gold cards to see if we have any white gold cards that we really care about. Luckily, we kind of, we, well, luckily or unluckily, we don't really have a ton of gold cards. Gold cards have a lot of power, but oftentimes you can't play many of them, which means maybe we'll be able to get there. It looks like we're going to want to play red as a splash, at least. We have this Highland Forest to help us with that. And then we have Squash, two Demon Bolts, a Dwarven Hammer, as some nice red cards that are splashable, and a Snow-Covered Mountain to help us with that. Our black cards are looking pretty good, too. We've got a Feed the Serpent, the Necromancer, Draugr Recruit is pretty good and sealed, Skull Raid's pretty good and sealed. And then we can just play like a snow-covered swamp and then the throne of death part. Blue's looking pretty deep as well. <clears throat> Sorry. We have avalanche collar, disdainful strokes, pretty good and sealed. Giant's amulet. And then we have rune of flight, berg strider, inga's pretty good, augury raven, so good blue cards. And then green we have the realm walker, the sorrel's packmate, struggle for skemfar, pretty good. I like horizon seeker. Sculptor of winter's good with lands. And we have like sorrel. So we kind of want to play like in an ideal world, we'd be able to play four color or something like that. That just plays cherry picks the best cards. But we're going to probably have to make a selection of two base colors and a third splash. Because um, red, like all of our colors except white have some goodies to offer us. I think green actually offers us relatively the least. Um, but that's the color that would have some fixing thanks to the Horizon Seeker. Some ramps thanks to the Sculptor of Winter. So it's kind of appealing to go towards green for that reason alone. But we'll have to see. So... Let's add in the cards that we would maybe want. So we could put in these islands. We'd probably want the amulet, the avalanche collar, disdainful stroke. And this is just all the cards that I could consider. So scald, the these two shepherds, iron verdict is sometimes okay. Rune is sometimes okay. We don't really care about these other cards because we're not super aggressive. Binding can be okay. I don't really like the hawk. Rune of flight. Thought thief isn't the worst. Raven's okay. Yeti's okay. Inga's okay. It's pretty solid actually. Sometimes you'll play a Village Rites. I don't really want to play Wither Crown, though. Necromancer's good. Sometimes you'll play Dra the Dread Rider, but I don't think we want that when we have um, the Recruiter to get stuff back. Okay, we want to get these Demon... What? We have Triple Demon Bolt. Wowza. And the Hammer. And a Squash. So we want to at least Splash Red, because we have five... Four great red removal spells and a dwarven hammer, and those work so well with the recruit with the necromancer. I mean, so we could play black red base and just maybe play Grixis because our green, and we could maybe play that giant. Sometimes you'll want that. 
in your deck. I don't love playing just random two drops. Um, and then looking at the green cards, Sculptor's pretty good, Horizon Seeker's pretty good, Realm Walker's pretty good, Packmate, and Struggle. We'll just put these lands in for now. I don't know if, if Carter's Vicious Return is very good. But if we end up putting some cheap fodder in the deck, maybe it's a little bit better. But I don't think we're going to have cheap fodder. Just looking at the build, so I think we're going to cut the Carter's Vicious Returns right off the bat. Land might be playable. Shimmer Drift Veil is definitely making it in. This is sometimes okay. And these are just cards. So just pretty, pretty much the cards that you don't want to play at all kind of go into the sideboard. We could technically play that. We could technically play that, but I don't really think we will. We could technically play that guy as well, or that guy. So... We kind of put in all the cards that we want. We pretty quickly can identify that white's not a color we really want to play. We don't have any, like, insane two drops to get back. We don't really have a ton of auras that we really, or mostly sagas that we want Master Scald for. And it's going to be tough on the mana, so we're going to get rid of the white cards immediately. That leaves us with four, car four colors worth of cards. The blue, black, red, and green. Looking at the distribution, we have... Seven green cards is the lowest number, but they also are a heavily concentrated power. So we have the Packmate, we have the Realm Walker, which if we have a lot of a singular type, five rogues, but we're probably not going to play all those. We have some wizards, we have some zombies. Realm Walker could get some work done. And we do really want to play this Sorolf, especially paired with the red removal. It does a lot of work. So let's see what our worst card color probably is. I think we're definitely going to play red, but probably as a splash for the removal effects and the hammer. That means we're not going to be playing the Cinderheart Giant. So that's something to keep in mind. The blue cards that we want, Inga, Frostpeak, Berg. Don't really like the Undersea, Undersea Invader. This is a 5-drop. I don't love Bind when I have better removal options. I will say this is probably not a Gold Vein pick deck just because I don't have cheap evasive creatures. So I can probably cut the gold vein pick. I already have an amulet as an equipment. Okay, so looking at the black cards, we have Feed, Skull Raid, and Draugr and Necromancer is the only black cards I really care about playing. I think the Necromancer is a card that I really want to play, so I can cut these Starnheims because I'm not going to play those. I would, and I have this this uh, Throne of Death as a card advantage engine, which I kind of need because my deck doesn't have like a Behold the Multiverse. So let's think. We, in order to play some of these cards, we'd have to play black as a base color. I don't really want to give up on the blue, but I have a lot of playable. So what ha what would happen if I just played black, green, base, splashing red for removal and the hammer? That could be a way to go. The blue doesn't really provide me any card advantage or removal. It just has good card quality. The Avalanche Caller works with my two Snow Islands, my Snow Swamp, and my Snow Mountain. And it lets me play the Mirror Lake. I could just play Avalanche Caller off of, like, one island. It's a thought, at least. So let's see what happens to our deck if we just get rid of the blue cards. We're not going to play two wings So we go down a lot in the playables department. We're not going to pl play Raider's Carve, I don't think. We just don't have enough creatures that can crew it. Uh, I wish we had a couple more black cards. I don't know if we're going to want Village Rights. I think Blue has a lot of our playables. It just doesn't have our like best cards. Augury Raven's good in the sealed. But what color would we have to give up to play it? We'd probably have to give up black, which makes playing Sir Rolf harder. We, or we could give up green, which means giving up our two good two drops. But the two drops get a lot worse without the snow-covered islands to untap. We could just play 18 lands, use Horizon Seeker as sketchy fixing, and hope for the best. Giving up red seems really bad with this high quality of red cards. So what I think we're going to have to do is give up on blue. Even though I like the blue cards. And then rely a little bit more on the black-green stuff. The best blue card is undoubtedly the Avalanche Caller and the fact that it lets us play these islands to work with our Sculptor. But we still have three Snowlands. 
four if we include this volatile fjord and the mirror lake uh we could just splash it off of one island mm -hmm. we'll keep that in mind we could play this plus one snow island and splash it because of the mirror lake which is eh, a fine card i just don't think we have the fixing to do that it's just so tough Fjord could be a card that we play just because of the Sculptor of Winters to help us ramp. So let's look at the red cards we have available to us. If we're going into a... I guess we would be black-green, so we would want a black card. Wow, we have Carter's Vicious Returns, which are really not great. The, the Haven's not good. I think we're going to have to play blue, which maybe means giving up green, because green is our weakest color, I'd say. And then maybe just splash the a couple of the green cards, the pack mate and the Sir Rolf, and then play blue as a base color. We'll put that in for now, but we're probably not going to end up playing it in the final build. We don't splash the fixing part. We just play... And we probably wouldn't play Struggle either. We just have a lot of removal here. This card would name... We don't have a lot of creatures in this deck even. What the heck? We only have seven creatures. So we probably don't play the Realm Walker. Now we just add the blue cards, which is just numerous blue cards that are quite solid. We could even play this card as an extra mana dork. Yeah, we have to play blue. It just has so many of our playables in it. So if we're splashing green, we have one green source, two green source, three green sources. We'll probably just want to splash the Sirolf. I like the pack mate, but it's kind of hard to facilitate casting that early. Because we are playing a lot of colors. Blue, red, black, and green. So probably best to splash only one green card, the bare minimum, off of as few sources as possible. I do love the pack mate, but I don't think I can afford it in my mana base. Okay. So now that we've kind of come to that conclusion, we're playing blue-black base. Because we have double black cards, remember? So we want to play the black cards. We're playing blue-black base. And splashing red for removal and black and green for sir rolf so if we're doing it that way again we don't care about the white cards so blue black probably doesn't want binding the monster because we have all this red removal it's better i could see playing the carful harbinger because we do have a decent number of instants and things like that some foretell cards the thought thief is sometimes playable It's not like a card I'm passionate about by any means. I don't love village rights. But there is a lot of removal running around, and I can just oftentimes find the mana for this, probably. We have 14 creatures now. Hmm... I think with the Dwarven Hammer, we don't need, like, a pure equipment like a Raven's Wings. Okay, so now we're just going through the cards. We don't need Bind. Don't need any of those. We don't need the Village Rights. Don't need the Pet. We already have a lot of things with Flying, anyway. Dread Rider. As a 3-7, it works with the Throne of Death as a way to draw, as a way to finish them off. Milling ourselves... I don't love it. I don't hate it either. I could see playing it as a top-end finisher. We have some already got some pretty decent finishers, though. And yeah, I'm not missing out on these green cards except for the pack mate, which I don't think I can support. And then... Gold Vein pick is not great unless I have some evasion, which I do have these two augury ravens. I don't love the harbinger. I could see cutting that guy. I could see cutting a Dragger Thought Thief. 
Yeah, I don't think I have enough creatures to go for just too heavy on an equipment. So I think this is better. Black, blue base, splashing red off of the Highland Forest, the Volatile Fjord, Shimmer Drift Vale, Certainly Frostpire. And just kind of hoping for the best with regards to that. Maybe play 18 lands because I do have a couple of sack lands. Let's just do this right now while we figure out our mana. Okay. So how many mana lands is this? This is 3, 4, 5, 6, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We could probably play 18 in this deck. We have Avalanche Caller as a mana sink. Throne of Death as a mana sink. Dwarven Hammer as a mana sink. Uh, that's not really a mana sink. Then we could even get the Dread Rider in and count that as a mana sink. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't want any of these blue cards. Don't really want any of these red cards. Can't play these green cards. So... I think this is the deck, maybe, but I want to get one extra land in. I think splashing Sorolf off of three sources is probably okay. Where's my third source? I have Highland Forest, Shimmer Drift Vale. And a forest. That could be my 18th land. One, two, three green sources. Three, four, yeah, and then I cut the Dread Rider because it's just bad. And I hope to win it like this. It could happen. Stranger things have happened. This is not the worst deck I've ever had. My splashes are ambitious, but doable. Always the dream combination. My creature counts a little bit higher because I have the amulet. And the hammer. And both of those are pretty good for Rune of Flight as a win condition late game. So yeah, I think we're going to run like this. Let's look at our color distribution. 10, 7. So mostly blue and black and then 5 red cards. So let's first make Sir Rolf the picture because he was kind of the card that made things tough. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 blue sources kind of. 5. We need an extra black source. We have one, two, three, four, five red sources. With only five black sources. Yikes. This is a nightmare. Maybe we don't splash. Who we play? Oh, it's so tricky. Maybe we splash black for Draugr and the Egon, and that's all we splash for in black. And then we use green as a base color. Oh my gosh. This Feed the Serpent might be baiting me in. Because we don't have... Our mana is just so bad if we go four colors. Oh, maybe we can't splash the Sorolf. Oh, it's so bad. Maybe we just can't play the Sorolf. Weird that it says it costs four blue-blue. We cut the Sorolf, we cut that, we cut the Highland Forest. Our mana certainly gets a lot better. Oh, none of my cards have texts anymore. That's bizarre. There it is, it's back. So this mana base would be 10, 6, 5. So I would go like... One, two, three, four, five. And then this one is how many sources of each? Ten, six, five. It's five, six, seven, eight, fifteen. Eight, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty lands. Jeez Louise. Three, four, five, six, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17. So then what would I round my deck out with? 
Probably have to play Village Rights in this build. And maybe play the Dread Rider. Hmm. Arguable on whether this is better, but I'll cast my spells a whole heck of a lot more. Which is nice. Maybe I could just play the second Thought Thief. But Dread Rider's fine as a top end card. It ends games and it's really hard to kill. I probably would rather just play the Thought Thief than the Village Rights, though. So this is a much more clean deck. So this is 11 7 5. So 4, 5, 6, 7, kind of 8. For black, we have 5, kind of 6. For red, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, kind of 5. So I cut one of these for an extra swamp. Oh, I missed out on one of the swamps. So this is giving me 7 black sources. So now I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't need one more of those. 6, 7, kind of 8. Yeah, I can go back. I didn't see the snow-covered swamp. I kept missing that. I just kept on not counting. I'm sure that was driving people wild. Four, five, six, seven, kind of eight, five, six, kind of seven, and then one, two, three, four, kind of five. Yep, I think this is going to do it for the build. This one was really tough, um, but I ultimately decided to go for a little bit more consistency rather than the higher upside of trying to get extra green cards in this deck, which was just going to be nearly impossible. Definitely can get some wins. Maybe not as good as my last pool that I had, but I will have to see how it does, and I'll see you folks in the matches. Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support me and my content over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Special thanks to those at the credits level and to all of the new patrons who helped me reach the microphone funding goal. It is thanks to the support of patrons that I am able to steadily improve the quality of my videos and produce as much content as I do. Even just a dollar a month goes a long way, and there are a host of cool rewards that you gain access to by becoming a patron. If my content has provided you with some value, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. It really makes a big difference. Without further ado, though, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one. Uh, looking at this hand, it's definitely a keep. We have five lands, but we have all our colors. We have Berg, Strider, and Rune of Flight. So we have a couple of spells as well. So overall, we're in okay shape. Drawing a land, they're not great. But our deck does have some mana sinks in it. We should overall be okay. Oh, dearie me. I don't think I want to use the Rune of Flight just yet. I'm not too afraid of the Blood Sky Berserker. It's kind of hard to get two spells going in sealed. Okay, that's a little bit scarier. This hand got a lot worse when we drew three lands off the top. I will say. Even though they're all snow lands. Okay. So, if we start drawing some spells, we're going to be cooking with fire here. Oh, yeah. Let's go. A library. There we go. We're finding some action. So next turn, it's Bergstrider, and then it is suiting up the Bergstrider with Rune of Flight and Augury Raven. Jeez Louise, I, I really hope I win this one. Sure. They're just playing all these like random cards. I just did not draw spells at the beginning of the game, which is going to make it t tough. But certainly still doable. Okay, so they hit a land. One for one. But that's not a concern for me, really. I can't control it at all. I need to put the pressure on him. Otherwise, Dogged Pursuit's gonna kill me.
I need them to have a bad couple turns here. Oh, that's not a bad turn at all. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Vengeful Reaper, eh? If they double crew, I'm gonna block. I can't afford to take too much damage from these dog because the dogged pursuit's gonna finish me off otherwise. If I go to eight, can I win? They're not gonna be double spelling anytime soon. They have two carves, so this one's pretty useless to them. On its own. Next turn they're gonna activate this land, wreck me. Uh, if I go to 8, I'll go to 7. I have this guy to block that guy. Can I kill them in time? I don't have any life gain in my deck. Which makes this so much trickier. I don't think I can... I think I have to take it and just hope to kill them in by 7 turns and take no more damage for the rest of the game. Not the best draw I could have hoped for. <sighs> yeah, I think we've lost. We just drew abysmally here. We kept a five lander, which is a risk in and of itself, and we drew two spells the entire game. Go Sima. Maybe we were supposed to trade. I don't know. I don't think we can really. Yeah. They were just going to kill my Draugr Thought Thief, make a couple 1-1s, one -ones, and I was going to be in trouble. Yeah, I'm just dead. I'm just going to scoop this one up. I have no outs. I can't beat this Dog in Pursuit. That was unfortunate, I must say. I could have... If I'd just drawn two spells in the early game, so I could have maybe curved out a little bit more. Uh, one spell in the early game. Hard to draw worse than I did. So we're just gonna chalk that one up. Try again. This is an okay hand, though. We can't cast Demon Bolt yet, but we have some spells. And we have... Some early game stuff to do, which is nice. We can foretell this early. Start down the beatdown train with our raven. That's a good draw. Next turn we can cast this, play the tap land. Red, white, eh? I see no reason to differ from the plan. They do not have Demon Bolt, that's good to know. That's a wild art. Immersion Predator. With no protection, we are going to take that out while we can. It's too greedy to do something else there. Oh, well, hopefully they hit all expensive cards. Feed the Serpent and Skull Raid. So they can't play both of those. That's good. Just going to play Inga. Snow Swamp. Probably don't want this. Or the, What's my graveyard looking like? I don't want these. Maybe I want the Egon. I'm going to keep the Egon. And the Snow Swamp so I can use the Avalanche Caller for it. So I have an extra 4-4, essentially. They're not going to be getting counters, which is nice. Unless they cast the Priest first. 
and then have another land drop. And I think I'm going to be able to tempo them out here pretty effectively. Because I think the only reason they played Showdown is because they were missing a land. Okay, we will play this. Wow, there was no animation on that. That's a little bit weird. So they're going to get a couple counters on their guy. Hopefully they put them on the Berg Strider, and then I can play my Avalanche Caller, hit him for four. Narfi, eh? Well. Certainly sending with everyone. They will block four, take three, seven, eleven. Lethal damage. Let's go. We've got a win. Well on the way to victory. That was pretty good. Made me feel pretty good about the deck compared to how it did in game one. But I mean, that's not like that unlikely of a scenario as opponents having a little bit of mana issues. Our deck just kind of doing its beatdown thing. Seems like our, our deck can definitely get the wins. It's just not the best pool I've ever seen. Our cards didn't have, like, the concentration of power that we would have liked, and we didn't have the fixing to, like, play everything. I think giving up on Sirolf was probably a key part of that pool, but it's hard. Okay, we're on the play. We have a good hand here. This is one of those hands where if this was a forest, we would just lose. We would have to mulligan or something. So, good mana manifests in mysterious ways. Like, if, if one of these cards... Yeah, I don't know. So we get to foretell. Play Thought, Rithief. Zombie Tribal. New plan. We're going to foretell this guy. Just going to start the attacking in the air as soon as possible. If I don't draw a land this turn, I will still play the Draugr. Because I want to hit my land drops. We need to hit our lands, so we will ditch our card advantage spell. This is probably a pack mate, if I had to guess. Oh, it is not a pack mate. Uh, since I don't have a creature in the graveyard, I'm just going to play this and foretell. This maybe means they're going to be growing that or taking it to the skies. Spirit of the Alder Guard, okay. Well, that could be good for our Jarl, the Forsaken. Because if they weren't going to trade with the Infernal Pet last turn, maybe they won't want to do it again. Pretty good for us. I'm just going to do this now. It's like such good upside here. We get to develop our board and do that at the same time. We're going to hold the swamp because we can discard it if they do something or at least have the option to. We have some pretty reasonable spells in case this is a discard too. Which we know it's not Sorol's pack mate. Return upon the tide. Okay. Okay. That's not great. Not the best moment. They're going to have to trade off here. And maybe they just don't have an answer to this Augury Raven. That's the hope, at least. We're just hoping. They have six cards in hand. I don't think they got a card off of the second Spirit of the Alder Guard trigger, so maybe they don't have a lot of snow stuff in their deck. Okay, well that's a good sign.
just going to play the highest power card. Four or five that they can't interact with very much. Well, still playing around discard two. Okay, so they're just a straight up two color deck. Got the win. Let's go. Just putting some pressure on them. These Augury Ravens doing some work. We have a Frost Peak Yeti, which is also known as the Poor Man's Augury Raven. Evasion can win championships. It's like the classic saying, defense wins championships, but applied to evasion. I do like the Rune of Flight in the deck. I could also see an argument for playing a Raven's Wings. So I'll have to reevaluate after this this game how Raven's Wings would maybe look. Okay, we're going to keep this on the draw. We have our Augury Raven on turn 3 at the latest. We have a couple things to do with our mana, and we have all our colors now. Playing against another green deck. Flyers can be an issue for these sorts of decks. Well, now we know how fast we have to kill them before they activate this. It can be tough to kill them before that, but Skull Raid should help delay them on that path. I wish we'd been on the play for this matchup, because if we had the Augury Raven hitting them, it would be real nice. Augury Raven versus Horizon Seeker. Oh, this is such a shame. I think I have to block. I hate to do it, honestly. Oh, it's such a bummer. But I, I can't kill it next turn if I don't draw a swamp. And this thing's just such a huge problem for me. Real shame right there. Oh, I'm not liking my chances this game. Just going to cast our spells, be mana efficient in that way. Making up for the two for one from the Horizon Seeker. At least a little. The Giant's Amulet could be a really nice card, especially if we draw our Rune. It's hard to interact with for sure. There goes a Masked Vandal. Pretty nice because we were about to play a key artifact, or a good artifact at least. They discarded a Swamp. Okay, that's what they have. Okay. I will eventually be able to deal with that with my Feed the Serpent. They might have Disdainful Stroke. They discarded a Swamp, which means they might have all gas in the tank. I can also squash it, which is nice. So I can squash that one. And I will flash this in on their end step. I'm just protecting against them playing Swamp Discard or something of that nature. Because it is a meaningful threat. They could have a Disdainful Stroke. I'll probably equip it so it doesn't die to my frost pyre. Or this. They might have a disdainful stroke here. They have black, green, or green, white. So they're still missing a white land or a black land, but now they can get, draw either. 
That swamp is pretty good. I think they have Disdainful Stroke and they were deciding whether to counter it. I guess we'll find out. They do have Disdainful Stroke. I should just trust my instincts more on those sorts of things. But it worked out. The Rune of Flight plus the Giant's Amulet is really good. I can get back my Augury Raven. Okay, now we're really just living on a prayer here. Definitely keeping that on the library. And I have a lethal flyer that they cannot kill. So, what say you, bud? Sorcery speed. This is instant speed. So they, if they do draw a swamp, they could activate that. No, but they have another green source, so they have black, white. So they have all the stuff they need for it. So if this thing becomes tapped. So I could maybe just equip this thing instead. If they hold up all their mana for activating this, they would do two to it, and they'd gain two, but then they die. It's not a minus two, minus two, right? No, it is not. So they have white, black, green. Oh, they can't activate this because they only have one black. Perfect. So they have all the colors they need to activate this. I think they're dead. Unless they top deck something very good, like a masked vandal, but we've already seen the one masked vandal, and so they'd have to have opened another masked vandal, three to the bottom. Okay, they activate that. They're trying to draw something. Yes, we're on a rampage here. I don't think we want to add a do-nothing card like Raven's Wings, because our cards kind of need to all do something. But the Rune of Flight is definitely very good there. Let's check back in. It's always important to check back in, even though we've been on a little bit of a spree here. We don't want to get overconfident, so I don't think we need the Bind. The Flyers have been good, but I don't want Pilfering Hawk. Village Rites could be decent. Certainly could be decent. I don't think we want Dogged Pursuit. Because we don't put that much pressure on them all the time, but we have been kind of curving out or winning with Flying in the late game. Yep, so the card that I'm most considering right now is this Village Rites. Has there any, been any card that's been really bad to draw? Village Rites is also really good with Inga. We haven't really had to rely on Dread Rider, but I feel like it could be good, especially with the um, Giant card. 3 and 1, already this deck is kind of overperforming where I thought it would be. We've been playing pretty well, I'd say. Very focused, locked in, locked and loaded. On the play, I mean, what can I say? We're going to keep this. Our, our deck kind of needs all the help it can get to win, I would say, because it doesn't have as much raw power as some of the late game green decks. And this is one of our best paths to victory. And the odds of drawing a third land are pretty decent. And if we draw a Swamp, then Skull Raid's pretty solid as a card. Beautiful. I would love to draw, keep drawing lands. You know, if I just drew a land every turn, I'd be thrilled. But Augury Raven can really get the job done. You might have a Packmate here. That's always the card that I suspect at first. If they don't cast it, then it's probably not a Packmate. It is a Packmate. We're going to get to see how good Dread Rider is this game. So we'll have to keep that in mind. This has reach. We don't want to forget that. Oh, keep keep it coming with the gas deck. You love to see it. You love to see it. 
And now we're actually in an okay spot because we either are drawing a spell that we can cast or we're drawing a land that can let us start casting these powerful cards. This 3-7 is going to dumpster them, I think. Skull Raid doing its job, making things tough for them. I think just casting your Skull Raids is a pretty big level up when you're not like, oh, I'm going to save it to get their last couple cards. Oh, gosh. They must really need their lands, because those are some scary ones. Okay, we take four. Elder Leaf Mentor, sure. So this is where we really want to draw a land for Berg Strider. Frostbeak Yeti's not half bad. We can hold back these two guys. We can trade with the Searle's Packmate. Buy ourselves more time. They could, of course, go kill your guy, attack you for eight. And drawing a land to cast Bergstrider would have been better, but I am very grateful for drawing the two lands that I did draw. Keeps this competitive. We're still in the hunt. Blocking like this gets blown out by the Hexproof card. And we don't really have a reason to block that instead of this one. So we're going to block this guy. Like, we don't have any spells that deal two damage specifically. But if they... There's no reason to expose ourselves to just lose to the plus one plus one counter Hexproof card. Okay. So hopefully we draw a land to Berg Strider this... Not Vold Recluse. Because that's going to be the real key here. Okay, and Disdainful Stroke. Probably one of the worst cards we could have drawn there. Because it's a castable spell, but it doesn't help us affect the board at all. Which is not great. If we do draw a land, we are going to be in okay shape. Okay, again, we're going to just block the card that doesn't get us blown out by Hunter's Mark. Counters at the ready. Yes. Booyah. Library, we're hitting jackpots here. So I guess we can just block here, hope they don't have it. But we played around it for as long as we could. If we can go Bergstrider into 3-7, that then has a little bit of fuel. That could be real good. This has got to be something kind of good. Way down. Okay. Not great for me. Not gonna lie. You hate to see it. Oh, we're probably dead now. It was a close one. Very close. We can block this, go to one. If they actually have the plus one plus one counter trick, I'm going to be so proud of myself. Oh, uh, it was that trick. Okay, well. Good game, opponent. We had a, we kept a sketchy hand, so, and then we got a little punished. I don't think that the Dread Rider would have been bad. It, would actually, it was actually a card I was really excited to cast, because it was going to do a lot of work there. So I think that's probably a good sign. So now we're three and two. Finishing three and three with this deck would honestly be not the worst. I mean, this deck is not the worst deck I've had, but it's not the best. So three and three, pretty reasonable. But obviously we're hoping to get to that seven win glorious run. Well, we're going to keep this. We do have one of our lands that we want to name red with. Okay, we're going to play this as a... Swamp on turn one. We don't have many two drops that we care about, and then we can play this as an island on turn two, in case we draw an island, in which case we can name this for red. In which case we can name it for blue. Look at that. Working out for us. The magic gods are on our side. Chat. Or YouTube comments in this case. So this name blue, right? Yep. Thought Thief. Naming myself. You want to name yourself, especially when you have Dread Rider. 
Uh, okay, we're going to keep that on top. It is just a good removal spell, and uh, you never know what you're coming up against. Ditching that to draw land is probably also fine. I think it's pretty close. I just like, I'd rather have fewer resources and more spells at my disposal rather than vice versa. Okay, we're going to play the Thought Thief again. And now we'll maybe have to bin something good. Uh, yep, we're going to Greyguard that. But at least we're binning a creature for our Dread Rider. We don't want to do anything with these guys. Trading a 2-1 that dies into something for a 3-2 is not good for us. The Cravenest of Hulks. Well, that's a good one. moment. Killing a 4-4 is about as good as we're going to get with that. So we're just going to be patient. Red Rider can do some good stuff. They're playing three colors, but they have a best gear in play, which kind of gets dumped by Dread Rider. Dwarven Hammer. We also have a Dwarven Hammer. So now we're much happier trading things off. Nice, nice. Because our guy got a whole lot worse here. So we've traded some things off. We have some fuel for this guy. They could equip, hit us for four, but we're hitting them for five, which is a little bit better. And they have to pay the mana to equip. Bergy, okay, okay. I see you, buddy. You definitely want to be on the aggro side of this uh, attack here. Because with Trample on a one toughness guy, it's not great. Well, we're going to do this. We do have enough mana to use this, too, so we can take out both of our guys. Or if they play another small creature. We're going to just play our 3-7, though. I'd be pretty happy with that, I'd say. Okay. The 3-7's still looking quite good here. Look at this guy. He's just been waiting for a chance to perform. Wow. They take it out. So what could they have here? They could have a Demon Bolt type card. They could have a Fight Spell. But I think we just jam this guy next turn we Frost Pyre. We don't need to block. Bound in Gold, okay. Okay. We're certainly in reasonable shape here. This is huge for us. This Frost Pyre is going to win us the game. Blue, blue, red. I think we want the land. The drag Recruiter. Let's just exile. It exiles. But we have a lot of stuff in the graveyard. To get back. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five lands. Alternatively, we'll have three turns with Egon. So we can probably ditch this. Because Egon with Trample is a menace to society. Sure. They didn't put it on the hammer. Okay. We're going to want to play the Egon half of this. We have a lot of cards in the graveyard. 
So we kind of minimize their fall of the imposter. Horizon Seeker. Three plus three plus oh, that's a yikes. They're going to get a land, sure. Obviously, I wish I was on the front foot here, because that's when you really love the hammer. And I'm not going to get to counter something, unfortunately. Oh, we get to be back on the front foot. Okay. Beautiful. So, play this onto the hammer. Huge. Game-changing. Let's take him out. Yikes. Punished for my decision. Uh, of course, it's a Starnheim Courser. So I could go to one here. And then next turn I threaten lethal. I think I like that play. Because this is four, and then I have three, six, which means I can attack them for 12. And I can also just block with the Raven. Big moment here. I'm going to block. I'm a coward. The shield mate. Of course it's the shield mate. Gosh darn it. Shield mate is devastating. This is real tough. The game is on a knife's edge. I think I block this and go to two. This is my best chance to win. Because without the Avalanche Caller, I don't have an onboard advantage. I could double block, but they're just going to kill the Avalanche Caller. So this is better. I go to two. Then I have to keep up a 4-4 that can block it. Come on, just cast your six mana spell here. Yep. Yes, okay. Perfect. Now I have two blockers for this thing. The pressure is building. Do I go for the lethal equip? I think so. Now it has flying. And hexproof. Boom! Not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie to you, Chad. I forgot that that rune was onto the land. So, 
It gained flying, and I was like, right, I look like a genius. But in reality, knife's edge. The tension is palpable. Nikolai Bolas has climbed to 4 and 2 with signature Grixis in the colors of Nicole Bolas, he who shall not be named from the meditation realm. And we're up to 4 and 2. Knife's edge. That game could have gone either way. Their hammer, significantly better than my own. Whew. We are in the thick of things now. Those Beskir shieldmates plus Dwarven Hammer almost got me. Oh, baby. This is a great one. Keep. So we can double blue. We've got to name Swamp with this so we can cast this, though. I don't foresee using this for a while. Okay, we already have double blue now. So we'll need one more red source. Ditching the island. We're just going to get that out there. We want to hold off on this Shimmer Drift Veil for as long as possible. We're probably going to have to name um, Swamp with it. But if we can name Red so that our Sertland Frostpire can do some more work, we're going to be pretty happy with that. Hmm. They are looking for lands that would have seen up here. They have found one. Nice. So now we have our islands taken care of. Let's look at the top of our deck. We'll keep it on the library. It's a 5 drop to use with our mana. We're going to get a black source with this. Frost power is not going to be active for a while, but we have some good stuff coming up in the works. We do just have a straight up mountain in the deck. I mean, a snow mountain. And we have a, uh, I guess that's our third source, so maybe we don't have a ton of things. I'd immediately, I'd like to try to do this where, um, I like combo it on the same turn, but I'm totally okay with this as well. They counter that, okay. Okay. I'm essentially trading 3 damage for 2 damage there, which is good with my Berg Strider. Because they want to attack me back with both and play something to try and stabilize. I could hit him for another 3, and my Berg Strider will stabilize me a little bit. We're in a good spot here. We have all our colors. We have 4 cards, they have 3 essentially. They do have this thing, which could be irritating if they have enough snow, but I doubt they do for it to be good. It'll probably just be like an annoyance if they draw a couple cards off it. It could lose me the game, but they're probably like going to draw one card off of it over three turns or something. Okay, okay. I'm wishing I could have named Red now, but... Let's see what we're up against here. What are they going to do? If they have a counterspell, they have a counterspell. I'm playing this instead of Berg Strider, though. And they're just going to activate the Augur. Oh my gosh, if that's their whole turn, I'm stoked. They've got to have, like, a po Blood in the Cup or something. I imagine. What's this name in white? It's probably a blood in the cup. Poison the cup or whatever. Not blood in the cup. Hmm. I'd be much happier if this had named. If we could have named red with this, but I think at the time with the double black spell in our hand, a little bit more conservative there. I wonder what they're working with there. They could have a Behold the Multiverse. Oh, 
Oh, they just passed the turn. Interesting, interesting. What are they working with? A bounce spell? Another foretold card. So that could be a counter spell. They're binding this. That's interesting. Very interesting choice there. So I'm going to attack with the Draugr Necromancer. I think they might have plus two plus O combat trick or something. Really? Well, that's surprising. It's getting less surprising. Okay, it's all making sense now. I do have ways to get this back eventually. Hmm. Sure. I probably should have considered that. At the same time, I'm not that worried. I'm going to tap the Frost Augur because this thing's not attacking me. It has to still chump block, and I'm still trying to play around their mind drop potentially. If that's what they have. It's a razor's edge again. These games are all close. Another Foretell card? Oh, it's Avalanche Caller. Well, we're going to have to kill that. And hope that this isn't a Counterspell. It is, isn't it? Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. Behold the multiverse. Okay. It is not a counterspell. Two to the bottom. Okay. Keeping that on top for sure. Oh. Knife's Edge Gaming. We have a slightly better board, but they have one extra card in hand. I like to think of it as one extra card in hand because they've had a draw step. And so next time we have a draw step, it'll be like, and we have one more land in play. So if they play a land, then they'll have like the same number of cards. Like if they play a land, then a reasonable spell or something. If we draw a mountain, though, like one of our lands is like a reasonable spell. If we draw a mountain or our volatile fjords, that's two more outs in our deck that we have maybe than they do. Maybe I messed up with my team of bold play. I was thinking they might have a counter spell or the plus two plus oh. But if I kill their card pre-combat, they can't use their Jarl and I get to make them discard a card. But I don't want to use my premium removal spell on a one one. So there's that as well. Okay, so they play a land, so now we're even on the land department. Okay. Coming in hot. We're here to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble! Bum 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 bum. So it's pretty close here. Higher life total is definitely a big advantage in this sort of race.
I'm going to let them keep the Frost Augur for a sec. I'm more afraid of them like tapping out for a key card, but I do want to protect this from a discard spell. But yeah, this card's not very good and sealed when you can't get 10... Like, you need to have, like, half your deck be hits for this to be, like, a good card. And, like, a third of it for it to be, like, a card you're, like, relatively happy playing. I mean, like, a card that you're okay with playing. We'll kill it now. Because it's going to chump block. Punished to the max. Maximal punishment. Kazad 777. Maybe they are roping me. They might have a feed the serpent or something. But they might also just be disappointed with how many lands they drew or something of that nature. I, uh... Definitely think our Bergstrider might be rumbling in for the victory here after a brief pause. Or they have a removal spell. Run ashore, sure. Take action, for sure, put it on the top. So if they have a creature, we're in good shape. If they have two creatures, we're in good shape. We don't want to sack this to Scry 2 just yet, because we already have Scry 2, essentially. Wow, we get our Draugr back. But they get their Bind back, but Bind is useless now. Oh, I'll keep a Dwarven Hammer. And no big deal. And I have an answer for their threat. This bind is uncastably bad. I have exposed myself to minus three. Minus three as another removal spell that they can have as an option. Kaya, you've got to be kidding me. Does this kill things? It does. Each creature only. Oh, no. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. This is a nightmare. If we just lose this game to them having Kaya. Oh my gosh, the horror. Could they just not have a key card here? This is a blank, so this is uncastable for the rest of the game, pretty much. Oh my gosh. I messed up, maybe? Yeah, I did, because they can get... No, I exiled the guard that bounces, thank goodness. Oh my gosh, if the, if the Cyclone thing wasn't exiled, I would have totally punted this away. Hopefully I would have realized that, because Port of Carful can get back their creature. They cost 4, 5, 6, 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh my gosh, why? Of course they had an answer. This is so rough. I just need to draw a finisher. And they are going to have to use their Kai to exile that, presumably. Oh my gosh. I am beside myself. I had this Feed the Serpent the entire game, and then the one turn that I cast it, they cast a Kai the turn after. I'm in shock that that's how it works. Also, this is like the one card that doesn't deal damage to Planeswalkers, too. 
and they'd had the bounding gold, we're totally screwed. We do have our own avalanche caller to win us the game. We have giant as a way to win the game, the giant's talisman thing. And they're going to get Narfi back. So this is where we would really like to draw Avalanche Caller. We're summoning it. Life is easy when you're good at magic, the gathering. Just gonna auto tap these things so I don't screw myself. Yes! I can top deck two, opponent. How's it feel? Ugh. Ah, because that's probably a good human being. They played to the best of their abilities. Oh, that was just like, I had them on the knife's edge and they just managed to bounce back slightly every time. It was wild. But we got the win in the end. We're two wins away. It'd be really nice to qualify. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. Either way. It's just a good time. MD Black. Doctor. We're going to keep this. This is the sort of hand that I keep every time. I've got some scrying, pretty much, to help me find my lands. If I don't hit things, I've got a rune of flight to help me hit lands. The odds of hitting my third land are pretty likely. And they have mulliganed. One land, and I get to play these draugors, which help me find my subsequent lands. I'm going to play the Raven. He misses. I'm just going to play the Augury Raven, though. Missing on land number three. It's bound to happen in some of these hands that you keep. It's about a 72 or 3% chance that you don't, but it happens. And now we have to draw a land this turn, which we do. We're in golden shape here. These Thought Thieves have been doing work. Library, let's go. Inga can help us find lands too. And now I think our mana troubles are over. Meanwhile, opponent on a spicy f red white four color brew. They got a lot better lands, it looks like, than we did. Send in the pain train. They're going to be able to protect this, but at what cost, you know? Okay, so we're going to want Squash and Snow-Covered Island. Next turn... I mean the Frostpire. <coughs> Next turn we can play... Just another Thought Thief. Or we can Rune of Flight to get to the island as well. No, but we just want to play the Frostpire and the Avalanche Caller, I think, next turn. Avalanche Caller, Rune of Flight. Probably Rune of Flight onto the Inga, because it makes it a 3-3 three, three flyer. And then we have Squash available. They did Mulligan, which is helpful for us. Rootless U. That is terrifying. It generally means that they have coma. Every time I faced a Rootless U, my opponent has had coma. Which is terrifying to think about, but if they don't have coma, if it's just like a Lit Yara Great Room or something. Not Lit Yara Great Room. What's it called? The Lindworm, Ravenous Lindworm. Then we'll be fine. 
but coma. I guess I have squash to deal with coma. So it's not the end of the world. Maybe I was also supposed to equip the Draugr with this so Inga and Avalanche can double block this bad boy. Well, never mind on that front. They did that the wrong order, though. Because now I can block this guy. And attack into it, quite honestly. Going to name Red with this. That's a good trade for us. Graveyard on that. Okay. So. Could be in trouble with this rootless you, depending on what it gets. We're going to have to kill it, I think. I would like to draw, like, a demon bolt to kill it. So that we could still have this... Oh, gosh. We're in trouble. Well, we could double block it with the Inga and the Draugr. We'll probably do that next turn. Because this turn we're going to take nine. Bind the monster. Oh, dear. We're dead. We are in so much trouble. I guess we'll just kill the Avalanche Caller. We'll take nine here. Hopefully, uh, draw something good. No blocks. We have to kill this avalanche caller. Giant's amulet. That is going to be a good card. For now, we have to kill this, though. And now we just hope that they have nothing. No pump spells, no nothing. This rootless you is a problem. Huge, tremendous problem. Gonna make sure that this resolves first. We can block there. Go and get your coma, buddy. They can't cast it unless they have a land. If it's not a coma, if it's just a great worm, we're still in trouble. We need to draw another squash or one of our or our exile the spell. The hero. Okay, so we have one red mana. This guy's a beating. The Dread Knight is unreal. It's going to even get the Giant's Amulet on it next turn. They have one turn to kill it, and then they're just, like, basically dead. Can we do it? <laughs> oh, why? Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my gosh. If we'd had one more turn before this Tybalt hit, we would have been fine. I need to kill this. I need a top deck a kill spell for it. Gosh, I'm so... Oh, they just cast it, but my gosh. Boy, was that close. We don't even have our avalanche caller as a draw. Oh, man. That was Razor's Edge again. All of these were so close, but they had the Tybalt the turn they needed it. If they had been one turn short on the Tybalt... 
We don't have any haste, so we're doomed, I think. We don't have any 6-6s six either. Uh, we were one turn off. If we'd drawn our cards in the opposite order, if we had drawn the Disdainful Stroke one turn sooner, we would have been in fine shape. We didn't even have the mana, because we couldn't... If we'd had the mana for it, we could have considered going like Dread Rider plus Equip, but we were one mana short of doing that. Oh, that was a really fun run, though. That was a lot of fun. Very competitive games. Very tough ones, too. Hard-fought battles, all of them. 5-3 and three with the deck. Pretty good performance, I'd say. We lost to some... I guess in the first game, we just flooded out, and then we lost to that last opponent who had the Tybalt. And I don't even remember the third one we lost, but it might have been to us not drawing enough lands in one of our rounds, or to some bomb rare that I forget. I don't really remember it as much. I try to just focus on the victories, play my best, and uh, we got some sweet wins there. We had that one where we barely defeated the Kaya. Uh, Dread Rider was actually a pretty good card. I think it would have been really good in that last game if they hadn't had Tybalt. That would have just won us the game at the end there. Uh, the Egon, we didn't cast Throne of Death ever, but Egon did well as a blocker that one game. Um, the Augury Ravens were fantastic. And just overall, our deck performed very well, I'd say. The Rune of Flight onto Equipments was also key, especially onto Giant Samba. That's a great combo. That is going to do it for this draft video, though. We didn't qualify for day two on this run, but we had a lot of fun, and uh, or at least I had a lot of fun, and I hope you did too. Um, and uh, yeah, remember that if you did enjoy it and made it all the way to the end, take that extra second, hit that thumbs up button. It does help out the video and my channel. Also, subscribe if you want to catch more of my videos. It's free to subscribe, and uh, everyone is welcome to join the community and uh, get notified when I post future videos. You can also check out the Patreon if you want to support my content, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. There's a ton of tiers, very flexible, and it helps me continue producing these videos and making them better for all of you. Uh, you can also find uh, my the Discord server linked below and my articles linked below. And uh, yeah, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, in the comment section down below, leave hashtag Razor's Edge, because I feel like I said that a ton of times during the course of this recording. And it was uh, a lot of fun playing this, uh, making this video for all of you folks. That is going to do it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you next time.